I'd like to show you the basic historical simulation approach to value at risk using the example that's been in the FRM for many years. This is a simple idea. We select a window, we sort the returns from best to worst so that we can identify the lost tail. We look down that sort of list for the lost quantile associated with our level of confidence. Then I'll add a level of sophistication and show you age-weighted historical simulation, aka hybrid, because it's a hybrid between the historical simulation and the exponentially weighted moving average. And here are the idea is that returns that are more recent get greater weight, but we still have a sorted list. And then most of the viewers of this video can stop and go do something else unless you want to go to the end where I will show you technically the strict implementation of this age-weighted historical simulation where we make another advanced, sophisticated assumption about the data that we're looking at. To show you historical simulation, I've just used the data from Linda Allen's Table 2.3. That's in her Chapter 2. And the reason I'm showing you this data is that it's assigned in the FRM Topic 4 Part 1 and has been for over a decade. That shows you how basic is this historical simulation. And the idea here is really simple. We need to just select a historical window. How long will that window be? And Lynn Allen selects 100 days. So the variable happens to be K and it equals 100 days. There's a trade-off here. Normally we like as much data as possible, but in the case of historical simulation, more data means going back further in time. So that's less recent data. So we have a um, trade-off here between data and recency. So she uses 100 days, and then the idea with basic historical simulation is that we just sort the returns from worst to best. So I've up here at the top, I have the worst return over the last 100 days, and it's a negative, as we might expect, negative 3.3%. Sometimes in risk, value at risk, we drop the negatives because we know we're in the lost tail. I've retained them. So the worst return is negative 3.3% as a daily return. The second worst is negative 2.9% and so on. I'm also showing how many days, periods or days ago that was. So negative 3.3% was the daily return three days ago. Negative 2.9, our second worst, was two days ago. Negative 2.7 was 65 days ago, so it's more than halfway back through our historical window. But I'm not going to use the periods ago in the basic historical simulation because the idea here is we just sort the returns and really just look down that list to identify the quantile associated with our desired confidence level. Right, so... In these examples, it's our fairly typical choice of a 95% confidence value at risk, which means we want to locate the quantile associated with the 5% tail. Now, as a discrete distribution, for better or worse, the truth is there's three valid choices. I think the best one is to follow Kevin Dowd here, strictly speaking, and in the case of the 95% VAR, that means counting down one, two, three, four, five, to the sixth worst return. Obviously, these are cumulative weights, and that sixth worst return is negative 2.30%. Of course, I'm not too focused on the weights here because uh, they're all, each of these returns has the same weight of 1 divided by 100 because that's how many days are in this distribution. I'm not showing the rest of the distribution. So cumulatively is also very straightforward. So as a 95% VAR, I retrieved the sixth worst return. And formulaically, that's just 1 minus our confidence level multiplied by the number of periods in our window or days in our window in this case and we do add one so that's in this case for a 95 percent var that's a five percent significance times 100 plus one equals the sixth worst return in our sorted list is the answer to the 95 percent var 
Now, I think that so that's the I think that's the best approach because it's assigned by Kevin Dowd in the FRM. And also, I happen to think it's intuitive because here I've just squared off the 5% tail, right? That's the worst tail of the distribution. And then we're locating the return that's just adjacent right outside the tail as the var quantile. I happen to think that's intuitive, but I certainly understand if we just want to say, or if you want to just go one, two, three, four, five. Here's five and select the first, fifth worst return. Jorian would do that. And that's also a valid answer. Finally, we could settle on the difference here, so to speak, and use the average or interpolation here of negative 2.35, the average of these two. That's also a valid answer to the 95% VAR. Three ways to go. Why are we stuck with the choice there? Again, because it's a discrete distribution. If it were continuous, we would not have to choose. Okay, now we get a little more sophisticated with the age-weighted historical simulation, which has the synonym of hybrid, and it's also called a hybrid. Linda Allen calls it a hybrid historical simulation because it's a hybrid between historical simulation and the weights are using the exponentially weighted moving average approach that we use that is popular for volatility. So here the idea, similar to historical simulation, we're still going to sort the returns from worst to best and look at the tail. However, uh, in basic historical simulation, each of these returns implicitly got the same weight, one hundredth uh, uh, or one percent was the weight. Now, with the age-weighted historical simulation, the more recent returns get greater weight and more distant returns get less weight. And what is the logic? Well, we, there's a, lots of logics we can use, but the exponentially weighted moving average is very uh, elegant and efficient. And here the idea is that... Uh, the weights decline exponentially or the constant ratio between two days is always our lambda value, in this case 0.98. So that means that if the return happened yesterday, um, its weight would be 1 minus lambda. In this case of lambda 0.98, that means yesterday's weight would be 2%. And then the day before that, we would just multiply by lambda. So that's what I mean by under exponentially weighted moving average, the weights are in constant ratio to each other, and that ratio is lambda. So 1 minus lambda, yesterday's weight, the day before that, we multiply by lambda. If we want to go back to three days ago, we multiply lambda, lambda again. And so that's why the weight assigned to n days ago is given by 1 minus lambda multiplied by, my lambda is not so great, lambda raised to the n minus 1. That's why this happens to be a formula that in the FRM candidates generally memorize. Right, so if I want the weight 10 days ago, it's lambda raised to the 10 minus 1 or lambda raised to the 9 multiplied by 1 minus lambda. So the only thing about that, and that would be a fine way to get the weight. The only thing about that is if we have 100 days in our window here, this is a formula for an infinite series. So if we add them up, we're going to come a little short of 1% or 100%. And so we can lever these up proportionally just by dividing this by, that's my division sign here, by 1 minus lambda raised to the k power. So that'll plus this up a little, and then that will ensure that regardless of our window, in this case, it's 100 days, the summation of the weights will be exactly 100%. Okay, so you can look at the spreadsheet if you'd like to take a closer look there at the weighting function. and But I'll just step back to conceptually here just to highlight the fact that now we can compare it to the basic historical simulation. And we saw that the worst return among the one the selected 100-day window was negative 3.3%, which in a basic historical simulation got a weight implicitly of 100th, 1%. Here, because it's only three days ago, its weight is 2.21%. Our second worst return of negative 2.9% is very recent, only two days ago. It gets 
a 2.26% weight. And then that third worst return, 65 days ago, only gets a 0.63%. So you see how this column, in contrast to basic historical simulation, is really the essence of this hybrid, aka age-weighted historical simulation approach. And then now that Cumulative simply adds them, right? The 4.47 is 2.21 plus 2.26. And we have a cumulative weighting that really uh, is more accelerated due to these worst returns being so recent. And so it's fine at this point to stop, even stop the video if you like, and say that we can use this cumulative weight, uh, cumulative approach here to, to hybrid weights to ascertaining our 95% VAR is somewhere around negative 2.7%. That's why I've highlighted this in yellow. And you could just see in contrast, that's how, that's the answer somewhere around here we get under hybrid or age weighted, as opposed to what we got when we did not age weight, we got uh, only negative 2.30%. So that's a fine stopping point, unless you wanna go with me further, and I'll just round out and explain the strict technical interpretation that Linda Allen uses uh, in the book and that we know uh, can be confusing. And that is also in the spreadsheet. I won't, certainly won't go into uh, greater detail, but the key thing I do here is I take what we've already looked at here and insert I break these observations out and insert midpoints. I'll show you why in a second. And then we have mass-centered um, weights associated with each of the observation returns and their midpoints. And so the bottom line here is we're gonna we take it one more technical step and do mass centering and then interpolation we're gonna have a slightly different set of cumulative weights than we have would we have her here under maybe called this naive age weighted, naive age weighted, sophisticated age weighted. And um, rather than go through those calculations, what I have are just um, some diagrams to explain that logic in Linda Allen that we know from experience confuses almost every candidate that reads it the first time. And uh, what we have here is um, I've got the worst return, that's familiar, right? Negative. 3.3% was the worst return, and we've already established that because that was only three days ago, that its age weighting is 2.21%. So here's the key confusing idea that Linda Allen assert, um, inserts, and that is that she treats this observation, this negative 3.30%, as a random event where its probability mass is centered on where it actually happened to be observed. And so the weight of 2.21% here then, you can see, is now a probability mass centered at the negative 3.3%, starting over here at a weight of zero, because this is the worst, and going extending over here to the midpoint between that worst and second worst return. And recall the second worst return was negative 2.9%. My scale's probably a little off here, but the midpoint between our worst return and our second worst return is negative 3.1 right here. And so because this observation is now considered to be a random event where the probability mass is centered on the observation, it is the 3.3 return that we observed is considered to be associated with or aligned with the 1.11, or a, a little rounded, but half of the 2.21%, right? So that's the idea. 50% to the left and 50% to the right treats this as a random event. So the 3.3 is associated with a weight, cumulative weight of 1.1, and then we go out to the midpoint here of 3.1, and that's associated with the 2.21 weight, right? So now I'll keep going. Now I'll add, here is our second worst return, 
and aged weighted, it got a 2.26%. And again, it's a random event centered. 50% uh, goes to the left here to the that midpoint. 50% goes to the right which is the midpoint between the second and third worst and happens to be negative 2.8%. So now the return of negative 2.9%, it is aligned cumulatively with, well, the 2.21% here plus half of this density, which is um, round, um, uh, rounding no, 1.13, actually not rounding so much, and so you can see 2.21 plus 1.13 gets us to 3.34 is the cumulative weight associated with this second worst return. Okay, I'll keep going. And now um, if we go out to the midpoint here between the second and third, that is a uh, midpoint observation, negative 2.8. It is associated with the cumulative weight that adds these two, right? 2.21 plus 2.26 is 4.47. Go another step. And now we have the third worst observation negative of return, negative 2.7. It only had a weight of negative, uh, I'm sorry, of 0.63. And the 2.7 then as a return is associated with Right, all of this 4.47 here plus half of this 0.63, treating it as a random variable, and that this one is rounded. It's about 0.2, it's 0.32 if we round it up. So you can see half of that gets added, and that's why this third worst return of negative 2.7 is associated with a cumulative weight of 4.79, and then finally. This is my last one. We um, extend the cumulative weight all the way out to the midpoint between the third worst return of negative 2.7 and what I'm not showing, but what must be negative 2.5. The midpoint between the, th that's the third worst and this is the fourth worst. The midpoint is negative 2.6. And so that as a midpoint observation is associated with a cumulative weight of 5.11 because it's all three of these weights added together. Okay, right, so we've got the 2.7 return goes to 4.79 and the 2.6 goes to 5.11. And then finally, what Linda Allen does interpolate, and you can see, because again, we're looking for the 5% uh, quantile. You can see it's between 4.79 and 5.11, but it's going to be closer here to the right. It's going to be close somewhere about here, closer to the 2.6. And it ends up being uh, exactly uh, negative 2.63. Sorry, negative 2.63 is the interpolation between these two cumulative weights, right? Uh, look, uh, look, interpolating at 5%, finding that return between negative 2.7 and negative 2.6. That answer is negative 2.63. And then that becomes the strictly interpreted 95% value at risk, where we've age weighted, but we've also treated these observations as random events with implied densities, such that 50% is to the left and 50% to the right. And so that is what I do here in this mass centering sheet. So here's those cumulative weights, and then here's that interpolated value of negative uh, 2.63 based on really locating the exact 5% tail. So that's in the spreadsheet, and that really summarizes uh, age weight historical simulation. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, and I'll make sure we'll make sure to update you when we have new videos, which is pretty much twice a week. Thank you.